Time to get back to real hardware and we're getting back to more Konami classics on the MSX for the 63rd episode. Similarly to the MSX version or versions of Hypersports, Konami decided to split their other famous athletic game Track and Field in half for the MSX, except they also dropped two events from the intended 10 that a decathlon is supposed to have. Oddly enough, the original arcade version had only six events so it's actually too better. Too bad they only added 400 meters and 1500 meters running events when they could have easily added discus and pole vault in their stead. I can't say I play the two MSX track and field or hyper Olympic games nearly as much as I did on the NES or C64, but the double act is still one of the better ports of the game. Despite of that, it seems like the two track and field games aren't too well liked in the MSX community, although my only real complaint is that they were released on two separate cartridges, which makes the game ridiculously expensive for what it is. Still, it's a reasonably good, not quite decathlon for the MSX, worth getting into your collection if you can find them at a reasonable price. Just to make this episode less Konami-centric, I have included one of my more recent favorites. From 1987, we have a combined effort from Hudson Soft and Compile called Jaguar 5. It could have just as easily been called Jaguar 5, but the Hardcore Gaming 101 website article on the game explained that the name comes from the initials of the five heroes you control in the game. Jaguar 5 plays like a cross between Commando and The Legend of Zelda 2 somehow. You start by controlling a single person and as you make progress more people will join your group. Once you have collected all five members of Jagur, you are ready to get out of the starting area and start doing some real adventuring. The action is pretty straightforward. You can shoot just about anything and collect the profits and other items. You can also change the formation of the group at any time, or even choose to control a single person. There are some notable RPG elements in the game, which makes things a bit awkward since it was only ever released in Japan. So for us non-Japanese people, the easiest way to get to play Jagur 5 is by downloading a translation hack from romhacking.net and applying the patch to a downloaded original ROM file. Not that I condone piracy, but how else would we be able to play these hidden gems? Bringing us back into the world of Konami, we have a platforming puzzle game called King's Valley, which is considered to be another MSX classic, and for a long time it was an MSX exclusive. Later on, there have been ports to DOS and ZX Spectrum, and if I remember correctly, more are on the way. King's Valley is actually a bit like a load runner, but slightly more complex. You play as an archaeologist who's out to collect all the shining gems from all the pyramids in the world, as depicted by the game. The game is played in single or multiple screen environments with staircases and a number of villains chasing after you. You can pick up pickaxes to hack your way through tiles and knives to throw at your enemies, but you can only have one item in your possession at a time. Once you clear a pyramid of its gems, a doorway appears with a lever next to it, which you need to push up to open the door and exit to the next pyramid. Although the novelty of seeing a villain getting sucked up inside a bit of reappearing floor has been turned into something else, King's Valley has just about as much of the charm Load Runner has, if not more, since it is accompanied by great music and funny animations. Highly recommended. Since there is still a possibility to do so, I will have to include a Finnish game into the list, even though most of them are games that I didn't either learn about or played until long after emulation had come along. And this time the Finnish game is called Talavisota, which is the first 
Finnish MSX game that I ever read about, but didn't get to see or play until less than five years ago. As the name would suggest, Talvisota is based loosely on the Winter War of 1939, when the Soviet Union was trying to invade Finland from a southern line of entry. The idea of the game is to defend the line until the 13th of March 1940 by moving around troops on the map and reinforcing the defense lines in strategically logical manners. Once both sides have made their moves, a news article will be displayed, the effect of which you need to estimate by selecting one of five steps in a scale. The closer you get the estimation, the more reinforcements you are given. The nostalgia for this game has more to do with reading the review of it from one of those yearbooks I've mentioned a few times in the series, but I have come to realize this is a singular game in the history of Finnish game development, as it is an entirely Finnish strategy game. It doesn't play particularly smoothly, but the subject matter is such that it deserves a firm place in my MSX playlist. The MSX computers are often considered as being the home platform of Konami, and for a few good reasons too. Probably their most celebrated MSX title has to be the first sequel to Nightmare, The Maze of Gallius, from 1987. It is no less than the game that inspired the Lamulana games and should be officially considered as part of the Metroidvania subcategory of games. The Maze of Gallius is, um, well, it's the Maze of Gallius, a huge, non-linear platforming adventure that plays much like Konami's earlier take on the Goonies, but features elements that are more familiar to the Legend of Zelda games from the NES, such as weapon and health upgrades and underground shops that you can buy various sorts of items from. The Maze of Gallius is played with two protagonists, Popolon and Aphrodite, who are freely choosable from the in-game menu. They both have certain personal skills, which are required to get through certain parts in the game. For example, Popolon jumps higher and his sword is more powerful than that of Aphrodite, and Aphrodite is able to breathe underwater. Perhaps most importantly, The Maze of Gallius was likely the first platforming adventure game to feature insta-death, which necessitated careful planning and evolved platforming skills, as well as a good memory or a penchant for mapping to reach those rooms that gave you a password for continuing your game. I cannot honestly say that I've ever gotten too far in this game, but it is one that I like to come back to every now and then to see if I can unlock some more of it. Had I had an MSX back in the day, this would have likely been one of my most played games, as I'm sure most of the MSX fans watching this have. 